Hey guys, welcome back to Ganchi Plans. As promised, today's video is about my registry slash baby wish list uh, for my second pregnancy. And I've been looking forward to this video for a while. I'm gonna show off what I have picked out on Amazon of things that I would like to get for our second pregnancy and a couple of stretch items that, you know, if somebody's looking for some gift ideas, not you, people in my life, I said I've been looking forward to this video for a little while. It's definitely one of the more fun parts of pregnancy is shopping baby gear, uh, especially when you already have some of it and you only need to restock on some of the things that you know you're gonna want for the second one. Today's video is actually a collaboration with Manda from Manda Lives Life here on YouTube. So I'm gonna link her video up here and down in the description below. Uh, so definitely check that out when you're done here. Manda's a really awesome up-and-comer here on YouTube. She posts a lot of videos about motherhood and parenting and her baby, um, as well as a lot of cool art videos and vlogs and lifestyle stuff, so definitely check her out. I'm really excited that she agreed to do this collab with me. She's gonna be talking about her registry must-haves with a focus on minimalism and a small space. So it's gonna be awesome. I can't wait to watch it myself. Link is down in the description. So without further ado, I'm gonna take you over to the computer and show you my Amazon registry. So here we are on Amazon. This is what a registry looks like um, from the back end if you've never created one. Um, if you are a Prime member, it's actually a pretty good deal. You get this welcome box. Um, when you create a registry, you actually have to have somebody make a $10 purchase from it. And nobody has purchased anything from my registry yet because we haven't gotten around to any shopping. But um, it comes with you know like some samples and stuff you get like a onesie I think and last time I think we got like a bottle and a oh <laughs> we got a container of Clorox wipes I bet this time they're not able to keep those in stock but that was nice um, there's a completion discount you can use twice and uh, let's see in order oh yes in order to do the welcome box you also have to do everything checked off on your checklist here um, one thing that it does, it's not super obvious, um, but you have to actually go through and manually check everything. You don't actually have to add any of the things that it's suggesting down here. Um, you just have to go through and check everything off. So that counts. And then you're good to get that welcome box as soon as somebody, you or anyone else has made a $10 purchase. Uh, there's a, a diaper fund, which I don't use, but you can also um, allow people to get you gift cards, which I think just makes more sense. And then, because um, we use cloth diapers, so if you want to buy us diapers, buy us diapers, but like we're not going to need a, a rolling fund for it. Um, and then I think this also is for sposies, so that's not something I'm really interested in or needing. So I'm just going to scroll down here and show you everything that I have added to our registry. I'm, I mean, it is a registry, that's literally what it is, so that's what I'm going to be calling it. Um, but when I hear the word registry, I think kind of of baby showers, and I don't think we're going to get a baby shower for our second baby. We're having another girl, which I announced in our last update, and so there's not really a lot of things that we really need. We're not, you know, like, oh gosh, now we need to, you know, get something that our boy can wear. Um, all the clothes we can keep using for the next baby, all of our cloth diapers we can keep using, and a lot of our gear we can. So that's why I'm making this video to show you all the things that I think that we're going to need for the second baby. And as I go through, I'll show you um, some of the things are more essential than others. Uh, but I'm just going to go through in the order that they have these categories. They're just listed alphabetically. So, And you can manually categorize things. So I've gone through and organized it pretty well. So the first thing I have on here, apparel, I just added some socks and baby mittens because those go missing. Um, we got a lot of hand-me-down clothes for our first daughter um, and they have been great. We've got plenty, we have plenty of clothes, but the things that don't make it into hand-me-down bags are socks and mittens because they go missing. Um, these are just nice to have for like you know, the baby's scratching you or whatever. Um, and only I think the three pairs would be fine. I think we probably have like one or two pairs somewhere in her box of newborn clothes. But I know that we've lost at least one or two. <laughs> um, and then socks also, I think it would not be a bad idea to have more socks. Um, baby washcloths, 
Honestly, this is not something that probably I would buy off here, but it is on here if someone else wants to get us something cheap. Um, Cause you can just use any old washcloth, but we only have three little baby washcloths currently. And so having a couple more would not be a bad idea. You know, if it doesn't get laundered between baths and you run out. Next section, uh, bedding. It's kind of a nebulous concept, isn't it? We don't need more sheets, but we do need another, uh, another couple of, uh, waterproof covers. We have plenty of like sheets themselves, uh, cause we got a whole bunch and I was going to return some and then realize, you know, whatever, we can always use sheets, you know, they just won't wear out as fast, I guess. Um, these swaddle pods are amazing. I know everyone's always talking about their, um, I don't know, their, their swaddle ups and their, uh, the one with the Velcro, what's that called? Personally, I think these are the most foolproof. They're amazing. They zip up and down and it's a two directional zipper. So when you get them in, you zip from the top to the bottom, right? No, from the bottom to the top to get them inside the, the pod. But then if you're um, changing a diaper in the middle of the night, you can zip it from the bottom, uh, like zip the bottom one up if this makes sense to close it you zip it up obviously and you can zip it down to open it but you can also open it from the bottom and just access their diaper their hands stay tucked inside you can change their diaper and then put them back to sleep so these work really great for that we have one uh, that we got I think I got it from a, a consignment shop and I loved it and I'd like a couple more this uh, is a sound machine plus night light and it's uh travelable and rechargeable this is important to me because there's a lot of stuff that's like battery operated and i'm gonna run out of batteries if i have to keep changing the batteries to use our <laughs> white noise machine that we leave on all night long we have a normal plug-in one that lives in the nursery with our toddler and we use it every single night and for naps and i think it's uh something that really did contribute to her being a really good sleeper so uh we definitely want one for the new baby who's going to be in our room for the first probably about six months or so at least um Definitely for the first six months because that's what the AAP recommends. Possibly a little bit longer because I don't want the new baby to wake up the toddler if she's still waking up in the middle of the night a lot. So once we've done some sleep training, we'll move them both into the same room. But until then, we're going to want a separate noise machine just for the new baby in our room. The nightlight I think would be a nice feature because, you know, when you're getting up and changing diapers in the middle of the night, nursing in the middle of the night, being able to see is, um, some people think, a good thing. And then the the portable uh, option I think would be nice for <laughs> if we ever get to leave the house again, things like car rides and trips. Um, and we normally just pack the normal plug-in one. It does take batteries, which I think would help it either just save its settings like an alarm clock. I'm not sure if it works on just batteries. Anyway, we could use this one for travel down here car seat this is again like a stretch goal um because we're not going to need a convertible car seat right away um but this is the car seat that we have for our toddler and we love it um we've never even extended it yet but it does have more room to fit um rear facing for longer which is great because that's the safest way to keep your baby um even though they're legally allowed to turn around forward facing at two years uh it's best to keep them uh, rear facing as long as possible until they reach either the height or weight limit. So this would be for once the baby outgrows the um, the carrier, which we still have. It's it has not expired yet, um, and so we've got the the base and the car seat and the stroller all from the original uh, from the first baby. It was actually a hand me down as well, but it still has not expired. So once she outgrows that, we'll move her in here. Diapering stuff, uh, probably not like super important. We survived an entire baby without a diaper sprayer, but I think it would be something nice to have, especially with all of this toilet, toilet paper shortage stuff going on. I like the idea that this one is adjustable so that you can use it as a bidet. Uh, just, you know, I, I'm going to be recovering postpartum and having a bidet instead of a peri bottle would also be convenient. Some of these are not like currently in stock and I'd have to deal with that. Um, like 
as as they come just find something that's the same but that's those are the features I would look for uh, is something that has to be strong enough to spray a diaper but also gentle enough to work as a bidet it would be great um, but yeah I say we're actually basically done with our diapering journey on uh, with our oldest uh, she is potty training she's wearing one cloth diaper for a nap and then she wears poses overnight so we are going through very few diapers and she actually has not been soiling her nap diaper very much so we're pretty much done with diapers for her which is great this is called a diaper pod and some people love them I'm not sure if I get the point I thought I would add one to the registry so that I don't forget they exist and see if I'm interested in trying it um, it might be something handy to like carry around to keep the diapers separated in the diaper bag or to be able to just take this into the um, the changing room and back it's just like a different shaped bag it's like a wet bag but it's a rectangle anyway Boudreaux's butt paste is the best the green stuff is cloth diaper safe uh, these are for a little bit later on um, I was debating back and forth getting a stainless steel munchkin 360 for my daughter for travel because it's like um, I'm pretty sure insulated so this would be good for milk um, and then lids because this one comes with a lid but the ones we have don't have lids so there you go uh, we never had a Wubbanub for our first this is like a Wubbanub but it's a different brand that basically at, like Wubbanubs are great right it's this you know it's a stuffy attached to a passy but it's like sewn in and you can't replace the passy which just seems like a terrible design like why why are you gonna make because what if she loves the the stuffy we're not gonna want she's not gonna want us to replace the stuffy part you know sure make it machine washable but also make it able to be separated in case the passy gets broken or dirty needs replacing whatever so this works for apparently any name brand pacifier and I thought that was cute and the idea of these is good for early on um, we would actually just stick a little stuffy. Um, we would put her in the car seat, put her passy in when she was in the car seat, and then put a stuffy on top of her to kind of look her in the eye and put its nose against the passy to hold it in. And I think this would work just as well. It makes it easier to get him in, I think, for a child who's learning to be a little independent with the passy. We never used passies after we um, bedtime trained our daughter. But this might be something that makes it easier if that's because our, our daughter, she's almost two and she's still sucking her thumb religiously. Um, so we'll see. Anyway, these bibs I want to try because the ones that we currently have are the OXO brand. They have the silicone um, catcher, which is great. But the bib portion is like vinyl or no, I don't know. It's like a, it's fabric. Right, but it's like a waterproof fab, you know, water resistant fabric. So we wash it in the sink. We don't like machine wash it, which I think we could. I think we may have once or twice, but mostly we just hand wash it in the sink. But then it's still wet. Like it's water resistant, but it still has water. You know, it's it's wet, and so I wouldn't want to use it like for the next meal. We let it dry overnight. These are 100% silicone, so you could just wipe it down or wash it or whatever, dry it with a towel and stick it right back on the baby. So I want to get something like this. The high chair we currently have is the Costco, I forget what it's called, it's foldable, which is great. I super recommend it for travel and parties. It's so easy to bring to a party. It even stands up once you've folded it. Um, the, the problem with it is it's not the, the best for like 100% of the time at home use um, because of the something about the way the seat is reclined our daughter kept slipping down into it and slouching really bad which I don't think is great for you know avoiding choking when you're teaching a little kid and all of that I've heard amazing things about this Ikea high chair it's like 20 bucks at Ikea um, which I think is still closed because of shutdown. But um, don't buy your IKEA high chair from Amazon for five times the price. No, more is seven times the price. Um, but yeah, this gets super great reviews. Like people genuinely love it. Um, you can take the legs off and throw the high chair itself in the uh, dishwasher actually. 
Um, this is a little insert that goes inside that just helps support a baby who's not 100% great at sitting up on their own yet. So that for the first couple of months uh, that they're doing solid foods. I think this would be a really great combo to have just in the house. And then we can use that Costco one for travel or parties. Um, it's really, like I said, helpful to just toss it in the trunk, bring it with you to the party, set up at your little quarter of the party and, you know, have baby make their mess and, and do their thing. And everyone loves a baby in a high chair. Um, let's see. Agnes, our oldest, used uh, MAM pacifiers. We tried a couple different ones. She tried MAMs and she tried Nooks and she liked the MAM better. So we went with that. Um, but she did use these bottles, the Avent bottles. And so I thought it might make sense. Like I, I thought if the, the MAMs didn't really work for her, we would try the Soothies, Soothies next. Everyone seems to love Soothies um, for newborns. And I think they're kind of cute, the big round mouth on them. And so I thought, hey, we'll try them this time. Um, I mean, it's not like it's going to break the bank to try a different brand of pacifier. And plus, we got all of Agnes's pacifiers from registry boxes or registry, you know, welcome bags uh, from like Target, Amazon, and somewhere else, I think. And so we got them all for free, which is why we never tried the Soothe because it, we didn't get a free one. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to reuse pacifiers for our next daughter. She's going to get fresh pacifiers. So if I'm going to buy them, I'm going to try a brand I want. So like I said, we did use these Philips Advent bottles with Agnes. They worked great. Um, I just tossed a couple extra in here because I think we only have two, which is fine. Um, but it would not be a bad idea to stock up. But this is not the price I would pay for them for three pack. <laughs> um, it was not that expensive when I added it to the registry. So the Hakka, all right, it's, uh, uh, it's great. Uh, if you don't know, the Hakka is like one of these cult mom favorites that you basically give it a little squeeze and suction it onto your, the boob you're not nursing on. And then the other side, you know, it, you'll get let down from both sides at once. So as baby's nursing on say the left, you're collecting extra milk on the right. And it's a great way to build up a little bit of a stash without having to sit down and actually pump. Some people um, will actually use it. Like there's a way that you can squeeze it to actually get it to work as a pump. I never even bothered to figure that out because I have a double electric. So I use that, but I use this for catching um, and it was really great when you're still waiting for your milk supply to regulate properly, when you're getting a lot of leaking, because it avoids that leaking issue altogether by collecting it instead, you get to keep the milk. Um, and it also, if you're concerned about oversupply from pumping, uh, this doesn't stimulate you nearly as much as an electric does. Um, so it's not like you're asking your body for extra milk, you're just collecting what it's already making in excess. So it's not going to tell your body, oh boy, we're just feeding twins. Um, it's just gonna collect. The problem with the one I had that worked great for the first several months of the baby's life is it started getting weird and gummy. I don't know if that's ever happened to you when you own a silicone product that starts to just kind of degrade and it feels weird and sticky and like I, I stopped using it because it felt yucky. Also like my supply regulated and I stopped leaking when I was nursing so I didn't need it but I think I want to get another one <laughs> to replace it um, and hopefully it says 2019 new style maybe they're using a better quality silicone this time. I don't know. I have not heard of anyone else complaining about that so I feel like I just got a bad batch so I'm willing to give it another try down to the fun sections, furniture. Um, this is a toddler bed and I want to measure the room to make sure that this will fit, play around with like layouts of stuff. But I'm, right now at 22 months old, Agnes is perfectly happy in a crib and I don't see that changing soon. Um, she has never tried to climb out. She'll wake up, she'll stand up at the side of the crib and just sort of wait for us, sometimes call out to us, sometimes start crying, um, but she'll just stand there and wait for us. Uh, she, so she's never tried to climb out on her own, which is basically the big red flag, like it's time to switch to a toddler bed moment. I, she probably would be fine in a toddler bed. Every time we've thrown a challenge at her, her whole life, she has just risen to it. She's am amazing. Um, I really hope we get another good one. Uh, 
but at some point she'll want to move to a toddler bed and I feel like that point may as well be by the time she's two and a half right so the baby's born when she's 24 no 26 months um, and then we'll be in our room for at least six months maybe a little longer maybe a little less depending on what kind of a sleeper the new baby is um, but that puts Agnes at roughly at least two and a half before she has to share her bedroom um, until then new baby will be in a pack and play in our room and so we won't need two cribs if we can move Agnes to a toddler bed a couple weeks before we move the new baby to the old crib. We can hopefully talk Agnes into being okay with that. She's pretty smart, you know. She's she's very, um, what, what's the opposite of receptive communication when you're actually saying things? She's very articulate. Um, I'm pretty sure she understands most of the things we say. Even high concepts like, you know, new baby coming. She thinks she has a baby in her tummy, which is adorable. Um, so we need, obviously, another mattress for the new baby. And then we can use Agnes's old mattress on her bed. Hopefully help that transition go smoothly. Um, and I like the idea of the one without the footboard because I'm thinking this might fit sort of sideways in the room and then this would be a place to like sit and read her a bedtime story while she's going to sleep uh, or just kind of be a place to sit in the room period because we're probably going to have to move her rocker out of there to fit the toddler bed so the rocker will be somewhere else in the house um a bouncer I never owned a bouncer for Agnes and it was something that I like so I'm the oldest of four and my youngest sister is 10 years younger than me. So I still have some good memories of like when she was little and I was helping my mom around and we had bouncers for all of us. Like we all used a bouncer. I remember my little brother and my little sister in it and it being a super convenient place to keep the baby. And you know, they look at the toys, they kick their legs when they're excited and it makes it bounce just on their own power which, you know, or also if they start getting fussy, they kick their legs, it makes it bounce, it soothes them. It's like, it just seems to make a lot of sense. We never owned one with Agnes. We had the swing, which we still have. It takes up a lot of space though. We put it away when she was about six months old so that we could put up our Christmas tree because we needed that space, that footprint for the Christmas tree. And um, so we never ended up putting it back out uh, after we put the Christmas tree away. So, just because it took up so much space. So I think this is a, you know, if the baby likes this, would be a more space economical option. And I, I like the idea of just having a simple, super simple, cheap bouncer like this one. And not all of the patterns and designs are ugly. Like this one is pretty non-offensive and uh, neutral looking. Next guy, this is called the Sit Me Up. Um, I hear, if you've heard of a bumbo, that's also sort of a, a, t a baby help you sit up kind of device. And I hear that that one is not great for your spine development, but this sit me up has better reviews in that way. It's sort of a bit more inclined. It's got like a little crutch strap here and you set the baby there. I don't know, um, obviously personality wise with the second baby, but Agnes when she wanted, she was like, she loved being upright from early on, way before she could sit herself up, um, way before she could stay seated on her own and way before she could get into a seated position by herself. She would have loved this. Um, we ended up like propping her up um, in the court, like we have a sectional sofa and we would prop her up in the corner uh, with a couple you know, pillows and then you know, we could show her a little book to read or something and she loved sitting up. And I think this would be a nice portable option. I can put, you know, the, the baby on the floor next to what I'm you know, doing with Agnes or, you know, maybe on the kitchen table. Pro don't, don't follow my advice, but I think I would totally do that um, if I was cooking dinner. Um, anyway, but the idea to be able to have the baby propped up and something that's not gonna let them tip over to the side, like, you know, pillows on the couch would. Uh, I think Agnes would have loved this, so I want to get it for the new baby. This, I keep going back and forth because I love my boba wrap. Um, no, Moby, Moby wrap. 
is the one we have. It's basically just a long stretchy piece of fabric and you have to tie it a certain way and it took a little bit. There's, there is a learning curve with baby wraps. Um, and if your baby's super fussy, it may not be worth it to you to learn that curve because they're fussing. Um, also, I was never able to nurse in it, but I think the thing that's handy is you can just, you tie it on and then when you're ready to put baby in, you put a baby in and then you take them out. You can nurse while it's on you and then put them back in. So you don't have to retie it every time. I really love the way it hugged baby to my chest and um, I was able to do things like set up my computer and work. Um, move around the house, do whatever. Baby was secure on my chest and happy and would sleep. She would sleep great in that thing. Um, but uh, people love their ring slings. So a lot of the things on here are like, if people wanted to throw me a shower, they would need stuff to buy me. And I think a lot of people who love their ring slings might want to get me a ring sling to try because I've never had one. All of that. Again, speaking of like growing up with younger siblings, my, um, I guess my mom's friends were pretty crunchy back in the day. This was in the early 2000s because my youngest sister was born in 99. Um, yeah, the, they, they were all all over ring slings but back when I think they were like a new thing. Um, my mom had one for my youngest sister and, uh, and loved it. So uh, I think back at that point, like baby carriers were very clunky. This time I really want to get a backpack style diaper bag. Um, I think especially with it being my second, uh, we're gonna need all of the hands available that is possible. So strap the baby on your front, put the backpack on your back and you still are able to push the stroller. Um, it's just having an over the arm uh, diaper bag is uh, very unwieldy, especially when you've got two little ones to carry around. And I'm not brand loyal. This one looks fairly affordable and not too bad. Um, I think it opened, yeah, it like opens here to the main compartment to make it easier to get things in and out. I saw this one, I think, on a list that was recommended for cloth diapering because the, the needs of cloth diapering in a diaper bag, it's just you need extra space. It needs to be kind of big to be able to hold more than like one or two diapers. And uh, with a newborn, you do need to carry around uh, several because little babies poop a lot. So I mentioned we're going to have the baby in a pack and play for the first several years of her, several, sorry, months of her life. Um, we have a pack and play, obviously, and it currently is uh, living at my in-laws house and we could bring it back and that's fine. But I think if the world ever opens up again and we're able to travel, uh, we will want to have two so that Agnes can sleep in hers, new baby can sleep in hers and everyone is able to sleep. Um, this is a design that I don't know if it was available two years ago when we had our first baby. But basically the thing about these pack and plays, right? They make great bassinets because they have, I don't know if you can even see this line here is like a, it's a drop, uh, like it, it elevates the le the level of the crib itself to be easier to reach. That's the point of a bassinet is that you don't have to lean all the way down in your postpartum body. <laughs> Lean all the way down to the bottom to get the baby. They're just right here because they can't roll over yet. It's fine. Um, but when people see the word bassinet, they see pack and play. They see what's available on the market. Um, I'm going to even show you, I think. Um, they get confused because, let's look at some other here. You think, is this thing the bassinet? is this thing the bassinet and no um what we have is called a napper let me actually show you that too the one we have it comes with uh this guy and you think that this is what they mean by bassinet, but it is not. This is not rated safe for overnight sleep. This is like you're doing chores and the baby is right next to you and you're keeping an eye on them because um, it's inclined, it's, it wraps around them. So it feels very comfy for them, but it's not safe for sleep. Um, it's safe for, you know, observation and napping. 
And so I, it doesn't bounce, it doesn't move or anything. We used it a little bit. I would sometimes use it um, if I needed to like bring the baby into the bathroom with me and have somewhere to set her. Eventually I just gave up on that and just put her on the bathroom, the mat, the bath mat um, in front of me on the bathroom floor. Um, and she was happy there. But so I didn't really get that much use out of it. I think if I were to go back in time, I would have selected the bouncer option. I think it comes with the bouncer option that comes off. And um, that I would have actually used because I already talked about how much I want to have a bouncer. Anyway, this guy here is a bassinet. You can take it off and it's like a portable, portable bassinet that it's flat. It has mesh sides, so it's much safer. Uh, it's just very small, so it's only for brand new babies, but it would be easier to like travel with. I think it may even fold down a little bit smaller so you can maybe take it with you to the park or something. I don't know. I think it sounds like an interesting design. So if we're getting another pack and play, we may as well get this one. So that, those are my thoughts. Uh, baby banana. We got the, uh, the corn one actually for Agnes as a gift and she loved it. This is a little silicone toothbrush. Um, and when we were first introducing the concept of toothbrushing, she was, I think, like three and a half months old and we were starting on a bedtime routine to try to jumpstart the uh, uh, sleep training process as she hit her four month regression and sort of sleep changes. Um, so we included teeth brushing as part of our bedtime routine from very early on. And at that point, it was just handing her this little teether and she would chew on it for a little bit and we would cheer and it was cute. Um, so yeah, obviously we got rid of Agnes's old silicone teether toothbrush and we would get uh, the new baby her own. So this is the base model is the banana. There's also a corn version, which is cute as well. These are for me. Um, I am attempting a V-back and if all goes well, I'm going to need all of these things that I didn't need the first time. Um, so yeah, I've heard good things about Dermaplast, witch hazel pads, and then these are like reusable cold packs. Um, I, people talk about making padsicles and then I look at the like recipe, quote unquote. You can't see me doing finger quotes with my mouse. Um, and it's like squirting aloe gel on like a disposable pad and freezing it and anything with the word disposable menstrual pad on it I'm just like noping right out of there I use cloth link in the corner to my review of the um, postpartum pads I used last time these though are reusable it's basically just an otter pop that I could tuck underneath that cloth pad and just provide a little bit of a cooling uh, to my nethers this other section I have dedicated to things for Big Sister, and I'm definitely going to look at getting her a couple of these for her birthday. Uh, this is a book that I saw recommended. Uh, so is this one. I have not read them, I don't know. Um, these may have been, I think I may have gotten them off Lucy's list. I don't remember. Um, the book that we have read her, that we checked out from the library before society shut down and so therefore it's still not due so we still have it is called mama's belly let me see there it is and it's pretty cute um it's about a baby sister and we turned out to have a baby sister so that's helpful um but she likes that book too and it's we still have it we haven't had to return it yet um this is a doll carrier so if i um, I'm planning to carry, you know, use a, a front carrier for uh, the second baby quite a lot because when you're doing things with a toddler who needs your attention and care just as much as a new baby does, um, having your hands free to do that at times is very useful. So I'm definitely planning to use the Moby Wrap early on and then later on my Lilla Baby Complete. Um, and so I thought that Agnes might enjoy having her own baby carrier for her dolls. Currently she owns one, well, no, yeah, like two, I don't know, one like really infant baby doll and it doesn't own, it doesn't have any clothes. It was like a bath time baby. Um, so it's naked. And so I think let's get her, 
like a normal baby doll, some clothes for it, and some accessories because I think uh, she's already like she's taking her stuffies and like playing that she's changing their diapers and stuff. She is so ready to be a big sister. It is adorable. So I want to get her like an actual like this has some food stuff and I think some diaper changing stuff um, as well. Stroller. Okay. I've seen mixed reviews about this, so if you hate, if you have a Juvie Caboose and you hate it, feel free to let me know in the comments, but also know that yes, I have seen, I know that the, the mesh basket is useless um, and that it's not great on different kinds of terrain, but I think it's super cool. I'm going to show you some of these photos. It's a double stroller slash... Um, like ride on so you can see here the um this here is like a, a reverse seat you can sit backwards like a I don't know, what do you call that jump seat i guess um or you can have yeah as a normal seat seat this version comes with the conversion that lets you have the two kids sit like this you put the younger kid in the front and the older kid in the back um and then does this have an even a picture of what it looks like but basically if you take this seat off you can have um, the younger kid either stand on the footboard here at the bottom right here or sit on like the jump seat here backwards and also not shown in these pictures but um, if you recline the front seat it has a universal adapter that allows you to just sort of set your um, car seat on the front and strap it in um, so it's like safe to use. It doesn't click in, but it works for like any car seat, which is nice. And so the idea is that I will early on be able to put the baby's car seat on the front and have Agnes sit in this seat in the back. And then later on, as she gets more confident wanting to get on and off and stuff, she will be able to use the jump seat slash um, ride board and the second baby when she gets out of her car seat will be in the front. So. I think that it's pretty cool. It folds quite small. It is very compact and lightweight uh, as far as double strollers go. And I'm really excited to try to use this. So there you go. We also will still have our um, Vertex Be Agile if we want a single stroller. Uh, and we can do a single stroller plus baby wearing if it turns out that new baby doesn't like the stroller or whatever. But this is the stroller that I've selected. It's also like not expensive for a double stroller. So this is de like definitely the first thing I'm gonna be buying for ourselves. Um, some simple toys that I thought about getting for Agnes but never did. I heard great things about stacking cups. She's a little beyond that right now. Um, but these would be, I think, a good thing to get. She loved the one shaky egg she had, which was an Easter egg filled with beans and taped with duct tape, which we made at Storytime at the library. Um, these are a lot cuter. <laughs> they are shaped like forest animals and are not going to ever come apart um, and spill beans everywhere. Uh, so this is something I want to get for the second child. And I think Agnes would still enjoy these at this age. And then this little guy is pretty cool. It's a teething mitten. Um, I've heard good things, never got one for Agnes but you know that's what this list is for is all of the things I never got for my oldest are on my wish list for my second so like I said a lot of these things are kind of aspirational and stretch goals as it were hey if we get another stimulus check maybe it'll all go straight to baby gear um, but there are a few of these things that I'm definitely going to get for ourselves and other things that are just going to be like gift ideas for people if they ask and some of them, like, we're not going to need a high chair right away. And even if we do need the high chair, we have one, right? Same with, like, the pack and play. We're not going to need two pack and plays until we're able to travel again. Um, and even if we did, it wouldn't be the end of the world. We can just, you know, put the new baby in the pack and play and have Agnes sleep in the bed with us. We can make do without a lot of these things. I think um, since we already have a car seat, we pretty much... I think the stroller is like the one thing I really want. Um, yeah, a backpack for diapers would be very important. And then this will be eventually, 
essential, but not yet. So, you know, and none of these things are that expensive, actually. I am, I, at one point, threw everything in the list in my cart, and it was like 1200 for everything, um, which seemed pretty reasonable to me at the time. Now, some of the prices have gone upward, become unavailable, and I would have to you know it would be a lot more work to do that but i think at some point i tossed a couple of things that it were like my absolutely i want to buy this for myself before the baby comes items and um even that was less than 500 i think so i am pretty happy with this list thanks for watching i hope you found some of that useful or interesting uh, definitely let me know down in the comments below what were your must-have baby essentials for number two I'm feeling optimistic now, but I know that it's going to be a real handful. So if there's any product recommendations that make the transition a little bit easier, then I want to hear about them. <laughs> now that you've watched this whole video, first, subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any of my content coming out Thursdays and Sundays every week. Second, go check out Manda Lives Life and the awesome video that she did. Thanks again so much to Manda for collabing with me. It was a lot of fun. And number three, come back on Thursday for another planner flip through video. I know those are everybody's favorite. I love them too, and I'll see you then. So thanks so much for watching. Bye.